Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We'll be using this book here, the official guide 2024. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Let's look at the very first problem. The problems of math portions, math problems in the book begin on page number 75. Turn to page number 75. On page number 75, the very first problem I have already, already I have already set it up on the problem on the blackboard. The idea is very straightforward. Every time I set up a problem on the blackboard, pause the video immediately, solve the problem yourself, and then compare your work with the work that we're going to do together, you and I. So here's the question. The question is: we have a car dealership, and we are told that the, for the first six days of the week they have sold four, seven, two, eight, three, and six cars. On the seventh day, we are told that they sold either two cars or four cars or five cars. The question simply is, for what value or values out of these three does the average equal the median? And these are the values here, two, four, and five, one, two, and three, and these are the answer choices. Let's see what we can do. This is your chance to pause the video right now and then do it together with me as we are about to do. If you look at the first value, the first value that we are given is 2. So we have a 2, then we have another 2, then a 3 and a 4, a 2, a 2, a 3 and a 4, 3 and a 4, and then I believe we have 6, 7 and 8. There we go, 6, 7 and 8. 6, 7 and 8. Since there are 7 values, this is the median. The median is very straightforward, right in the middle. The question simply is, is the average of these seven numbers also four? If that's the case, then average equals median. Let's find out, shall we? In order for average to be four, if we can somehow try to convert all of these numbers into four, the average would be four. I see an eight here. Why don't we take, take four from this guy, make it into a four, take the four from this guy, give the two to this guy, and give the two to this guy. So at least these are fours. That's already four. Let's see what we can do. We have a, we have a six here. Why don't we take one from this guy and convert this into a four? Now you see we got a problem here. We got we have a instead of a four we have a five, we have one extra, and instead of a instead of a four we have a seven, we have a three extra, we have four extras. The average is not four. In fact here, in fact here, the average is more than a median. Or if you want to be very precise, the average for this guy is if you were to do it out, because we have one extra here and three extra here. 3 plus 1 is 4. So the average here actually is 4 and 4 7. This part that we just did here is not necessary. You just have to realize the average is not 4. The average is more than median. Which means the correct answer, whatever it is, cannot have step in 1 in it. We can get rid of C. That's all we can get rid of. We can get rid of C. Let's look at the second one. Oh, we can also get rid of E because E says all 3. It can be all three because we just realized that the first one does not work. Let's look at the second one. If I talk too much, the problem will take too long. You, you don't have that kind of luxury in the exam. Let's try a four. So again, we have four and a four, but we have two, three, two, three, four, four, six, seven, and eight. Six, seven, and eight. I hope you are able to see immediately. I hope that you are able to see immediately that we have not actually made the problem of situation better, we have actually made it worse. Because before, a second ago, the average we found out was 4 and 4 seventh. Instead of 4 and 4 seventh, now it's going to be 4 and 6 seventh. Because instead of a 2, we have a 4. Instead of putting 1 deal in the front, we have 4 here. We have replaced a 2 with a 4, the average is going to be even, even higher than what it was before. It was already before more than 4. It's not, average is not 4 here. You can see, this is the median, this is already 4. Let's convert this into a 4. I'm going to convert this into a 4. We'll take a 4 from here, give the 2 to this guy, uh, give 1 to this guy. This is already 4. There you go, you see? It's this. And the extra one I gave to this guy. I took a 4 from this guy, making it 4. I took a 4 from this guy, gave 2 to this one, 1 to this one, that's 3, and I gave 1 to this guy. You see, instead of a 4 and a 4, we have a 7 and a 7. We have 6 extras. The average here is 4 and 6, 7. Correct answer, whatever it is, cannot have 2 in it. 2 does not work. 2 does not work either. Which means the answer cannot be A, 
answer cannot be D. There you go. The answer is B. The answer is B. I'm going to very quickly show you. I'm going to very quickly show you why this one works because now by inserting this guy, we introduce the average is no longer the median is no longer four. The median is going to be five. The median is going to be five because as you can see here, we have a three, we have a four, we have a five, six, seven, and eight. We have consecutive numbers: three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Of course, the median is. I missed something. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have two. That's what I missed. There are seven numbers here. Since there are seven numbers here, three on this side, three on this side, the average, the median is five, and so is the average. Why is the average five? Because they're consecutive numbers. If they're consecutive, the median is going to be the middle number. You just, you just take a three from this guy, give it to this guy, now they both become five. You take a two from this guy, give it to this guy, they both become five. You take a one from this guy, give it to this guy, they both become five. Now the median is same as the average. The answer is the answer is three only. Answer is B. Let's look at the second one. In the second one we are told, or rather we are being asked to find the difference between the maximum and minimum revenue. Difference between maximum and minimum revenue. And this is what we are told. We have four days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. These are the prices we were charged and this is the number of tickets that were sold for the show. 40, 50, 40 and 50. 200, 240, 220 and 300. Again, do it yourself as soon as I finish explaining the problem. So we are told that we have a show which was run on four days. On four days the show was run Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And these were the prices that were charged on those four days. $40 on Thursday, $50 on Friday and so on and so forth. And this is how many tickets we sold on the four days. The question is, what's the difference between the maximum revenue that we had out of these four days and the minimum revenue that we had in those four days? Do it yourself. Pause the video. So here we go. First thing we're going to do is, we're going to get rid of these zeros. They're not necessary. We're going to insert the two zeros at the end. 4 times 20 is 80. 5 times 24. 10 times 24 would have been 240, so it's 120. 4 times 22 is 88. 5 times 30 is 150. There you go. 150 seems like the highest number. 80 is the lowest number. Hence the difference between the maximum revenue and the minimum revenue is 70. Number 3. In number three, we are told that we have three peop four people rather, C, J, M, and R. What their actual names are, we don't need to worry. There are four people and we are told that they drove, they each drove average of 80 miles. Each of them. Each of them drove an average of 80 miles. That's the average for those four people. Four people took a trip together and the average turns out to be 80 miles per person. That's what I'm trying to say. First person we are told drove 72 miles. Second person drove 78 miles. This person drove 83 miles. The question is how many miles do you suppose the last person drove in order to be 80 miles per person, the average distance driven by the, each person. Pause the video. It's a very straightforward average problem. Figure out what do we need to put here so that the average is 80. So here's what we're going to do. This guy obviously did not drive 80 miles. He's 8 miles short. This guy is 2 miles short. This guy is 3 miles over. We have a surplus of 3 here. So that's a 10, negative 10 and a positive 3, which means we have a deficit of 7, seven miles. Which means in order, in order to make up this deficit of 7 miles, 
this guy has to drive his 80 miles, his share of 80 miles, and he has to make up a 7 mile, 7 miles deficit among these three people because these three people did not do their share. They drove 7 miles less than they were supposed to. That's all. He must have driven 87 miles. He must have driven 87 miles in order for the average to be 80. Number four. So here we are told that we are going to get a commission. I always have to be careful about the word commission. Commission has two M's and two S's. And this is how we are going to get the commission. We are going to get 15% on the first $500 sales. And then we are going to get 20% of additional sales. The question simply is, what's the commission? What's the commission on sales of thirteen hundred dollars? That's all. Go ahead, do it yourself. One more time, as I keep reminding you, pause the video, do it yourself, and then compare the work. Let's see what we can do. So the first five hundred, we're going to get only fifteen percent. And we have 1300, so we're going to divide this 1300 into 500 and 800. 15% of 500, 10% of 500 is 50, 5% 5 of 500 must be 25, so this is $75. The 15%. The $800, we're going to get 20%, 10% of 800 is 80, so 20% is going to be 160. There you go. Whatever that works out to be. So that's going to give us 0, 5 plus 6 is 11, 1. 8 and 9. Okay. I did something wrong. 75. That's a 5. 0 plus 5 is 5. 6 plus 5 is 13. It's 235. You understand? Of course it's 235. How can we how can we bloody 135? This is 160 already. Number five. Number five, we are told that we have 1,040 letters and 3,000 coupons. We are told that each envelope, envelope takes one letter and two coupons. So apparently we are doing some mass mailing and in this mass mailing we have to put a letter in the envelope obviously and each envelope is going to take two coupons. The question is very straightforward. It's a very childish question. The question is after we finish doing the job how many coupons are we going to have left over? How many coupons are we going to have left over? Well, we have 1040 letters each letter takes two coupons, each, each envelope takes two, cu two coupons, so that's times two. That's 2080. That's how many coupons we're going to end up using. We have 3000 to start out with, so it's 3000 minus 2080. 2100 would have been 900, so it's 920. That's how many coupons we'll have left over. Let's do number seven. For those of you who do have actually a book right now in front of you, and for those of you who do not, just listen to me, this book, the, uh, the official guide, contains about 200 multiple choice questions. Which means, if you're thinking that these questions are very babyish, of course they're babyish because we are in the first 50. The first 50 are going to be quite simple. The next 50 that we're going to do, they're going to be medium. And then after that, the real game is going to start when we get in the second half of the set of the questions. That's where the hard questions are. Number seven. We are told that the original price. We are told that the original price is five hundred dollars. We are told that the price was reduced 
by $150. And the question simply is, by what percentage, by what percentage was the price reduced? They basically want to know 150 is what percentage of 500. If you want to pause the video, do it yourself. So it's 150 out of 500. Knock down the top and bottom zero. Now we are left with 50. I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 2. 50 times 2 is 100. 15 times 2 is 30. There you go. It's 30 percent. Of course it's bloody 30 percent because 10 percent of 500 is 50. If 10 percent is 50, 150 must be 30 percent. Number 8. In number 8 we are given this quantity 1 half minus 1 third plus 1 third minus 1 quarter plus 1 quarter minus 1 fifth plus 1 fifth minus 1 sixth and the question simply is what does it boil down to? What does it boil down to when you simplify all of this thing? Again, do it yourself first, pause the video. So, as we open all the parentheses, I could very easily go and erase all the parentheses, but I, sh I shouldn't have to. As we open all the parentheses, we should be able to see that we have a negative one third here and we have a positive one third here. They're going to cancel out each other. Negative one quarter is going to cancel out positive one quarter, and then we have a negative one fifth is going to cancel out positive one fifth. What we are left with is one half minus one sixth. Multiply top and bottom by three. We are left with three sixth minus one sixth. Three sixth minus one sixth is going to give us two sixth, which is one third. The answer is one third. Number nine. Oh, apparently I left out, I missed number 6. I have it on the next page. As I was doing it, I skipped number 6 and I I caught myself and I did it on the following page. There's two number 6 that we did not do. And once we finish with number 6, we're going to go back and pick up from 9. In number 6 we are told that we have a set of set S which consists of 10 consecutive I don't know how to spell consecutive. 10 consecutive odd integers. Then we have set T. We are told it consists of 5 consecutive even integers. The question is what's the difference between the average of S and the average of set T. So this is a good time to pause the video, do the problem yourself. We need set S which has 10 consecutive odd integers. Then we have set T which has set of 5 consecutive even integers. And the question simply is, what's the difference between their averages? Let's see what we can do. List S consists of 10 consecutive odd integers. List T consists of 5 consecutive integers. If the least integer in S is 7 more, I left out that part. If the least integer, if the least in S, I was wondering why there are no conditions on it. Least in S is 7 more than the least in t. I was wondering myself that you can put in any numbers. Uh, how can you possibly figure out the difference between the two or definitive figure? That's the condition we have to meet. The least in set S has to be 7 more than the least in set T. Should we do it together? Let's do it together. So, let's do it on the top so we have more room. We already know what we are looking for. Difference between the two averages. 
So the first set is going to have 10 consecutive odd numbers. 10 consecutive odd numbers. So I'm just going to make up 10 numbers starting from 1. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, and 19. There we go. And now we need, that's our set S. And for the set T, the requirement is that it has to be seven more. Seven more. So the least in set S is seven more than the least in set T. So the least in set S is seven more. This is going to give us some strange uh, thing here. I'm going to start I'm going to make them 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, 21, 20, 23, 25, 20, 29. So that we don't have to deal with negative numbers. So the least in S, which is 11, is 7 more than the least in T. So we can start with 4. 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. There you go. Are you with me so far? Now we're almost done. The average, what we have to understand here is that because there are 10 numbers, if you sit there and try to figure out the average in the classical way, that's not what we're looking for. They're trying to see if you understand the concept. Because they're consecutive numbers and because there are 10 of them, 5 of them on this side, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 on this side, 5 on this side, and the average is going to be exactly 20. That's the average. It's the average of these 10 numbers is the average of the middle two. The average of 19 and 21 is 20. Here we have five numbers, which means the average is right here. The average is right there. And the difference is two. Or rather twelve. Ten consecutive one. It should be 12. The answer is 12. Let me check in the back. Number 6. Very quickly. The answer is D. The answer is D. So this is 20 minus 8. The answer is 12. That was number 6. I don't know how I missed it. Let's do number 9. Question number nine. Question number nine, we are told that a neighbor goes on a vacation and he hires the, the kid of the neighbor's kid. And the deal is that he's going to pay him $11, $11 to mow the lawn per week. And he's going to pay him $4 to feed the dog per day and it's going to be away for three weeks that's all 21 days it's going to away for three uh, 21 days the question simply is how much does how much money does he owe the kid when he comes back from his vacation for the three weeks it's a very simple arithmetic problem so he's going to pay 11 dollars per week he's gone for three weeks so that's 11 times three he's going to pay him four dollars per day for 21 days that's all so that's 44 21 times 4 would be 84 looks like looks like the kid is about to make 100 and 11 times 3 is not 44 11 times 3 is 33 he's going to make $117. Number 10. In number 10, we, we are told that we are going to make a we have a profit of $48,000. We are told that we are running a business and the business had a profit of $48,000. In this in this business, we have two owners and 10 employees and we're going to split the profit because the profit is going to be split between the employers 
and the employees. We have two, two owners, two employers and ten employees. The owners are supposed to get three times what each of the employees is going to get. You with me so far? So there are two owners and the deal is that the owners get three times as much as what each of the employees gets. Each employee gets the equal amount. Ten employees, two owners, each get three parts of what they get. The question is how should we split the money? How should we split the money? How much money is each owner going to get? Owner, not the employee. Let's do it together, shall we? You do it yourself first. Pause the video. So it's very straightforward. We have two owners and each of them gets three parts. So that's the three parts, that's the three parts and that's ten employees, that's ten parts. We have to divide the money into sixteen equal parts. Forty-eight divided by sixteen. That's all. Divide top and bottom by four. Divide one more time by four looks like each part is worth three thousand dollars in other words each employee is going to get three thousand dollars and each owner is going to get nine thousand dollars that's all and the question was how much does each owner get the answer is the owners each are going to get nine thousand dollars and the ten employees are each going to get three thousand dollars that's how they're going to split the profit of forty eight thousand dollars that was the end of day one that was the end of the page. That was the end of page number 75. We'll meet again tomorrow. We'll pick up from the next page, page number 76. Alright? Bye now.